Hello. So, going to be just reacting to the special program. I did start to watch it already, but I didn't really make it past the the first redemption code a few minutes in. Then I figured, why not? I reacted to the last one, might as well do this one just because. And then I'm going to go back to continuing the story or whatever it was that I was working on in Zoneless Zone Zero. Hello, travelers! Welcome to the version 4.8 special program! <gasps> I'm Sarah Miller Cruz, the voice of the female traveler Lumine. Before we get the ball rolling, let's introduce our other hosts. Yay! Me. Hello, everyone! My name is Amber Avilas, and I voice Emily, a famous perfumer from Fontaine. Hey guys, my name is Danny Chambers, and I'm the voice of Milu, a talented dancer from Sumeru. Ooh. Yeah! And I'm Julia Gu, the voice of Kirora, a courier from Inazuma. Meow! <laughs> I love the meow. I'm so glad that they have Nilu in here, because she's seriously one of my favorites, but it seems like she's one of those characters that, like Kabe, that they've kind of forgotten about, it seems like. But maybe she has had a rerun. I feel like she just hasn't had a rerun at all, but maybe she has, and it's just been a while since her second rerun. I don't know. But, yeah, it's good to see her. Oh my gosh, amazing! So uh, I am so happy to have you guys here. Okay, y'all can probably guess why we're all here today. It's time for us to show off a new limited time summer map. Ooh. I can't wait to see what the developers have been cooking up this time. Yes. I haven't even seen the final version. Ooh. Well, that's what the version 4.8 trailer is for. Let's take a look. Yes! <laughs> Port Oromos is currently organizing a flower exhibition. That strange smell around here. Surround yourself with fragrance for too long and your sense of smell will become dull. Allow yourself to be consumed by your emotions and you lose the ability to think rationally. I'm Emily, a perfumer from Fontaine. This will brighten up the place! I love her outfit. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, Ooh. shall restore peace to the world. The, the chubby paper hamster just talked! Morning. Huh? Huh? Oh my gosh, Nilu's new outfit. It wasn't just a outfit. dream! But this, uh, metal mana friend of yours. Kirara in a pirate outfit. Oh my gosh. Huh? I guess I'll show these off for later. Oh my gosh. I wish... I wish I had money. I really want her outfit. Uh, it, it wasn't just a dream? But this, uh... She's a pirate. <laughs> That's what it looks like, anyway. Oh my gosh. At least her outfit should be free. Nickel Mata friend of yours. She doesn't eat hamsters, does she? I remember I was reading a book at the Grand Bazaar. Well, then I woke up just like this. <laughs> so this is what it feels like to ride a toy train. You're really easy to please, Navia. Do too. <laughs> Moving out! Ooh, that's an adventure and a half. Do all storybook heroes have to work this hard? If you actually expect me to answer them all, we'll be here until the next Interdarshan Championship. To find the dragon responsible for this whole mess. Oh, and obvious there. I just want Kirara's outfit. That's all I want. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I seriously, I need Lou's outfit. I didn't realize that Navia and Scar were going to be there. Wander. I really do love 
love that outfit though for Kuyurara. That's awesome. I'm not a huge fan of her current, her default outfit, to be honest. So, <laughs> that's funny. I just can't wait. You know, this is gonna be awesome. I'm more excited for this special program than last year because. I don't know, just more interested in these wow, characters, I guess. Wow, this is making me feel super ready for some summer adventures. So, this is probably the perfect place to show off our new character. Yes! Oh my gosh, Yay. that, that, that was a perfect segue. <laughs> a perfect segue, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I love Kirara's voice actor. <laughs> so, I've been saving for Emily. I really hope that they tell us that she's going to be available in the, like the second half or something because I need more time to to save since I just got Chlorand. Right, let's introduce everyone to one of Fontaine's most renowned perfumers, Emily. Woo! Oh, Emily isn't just a great perfumer. She's also a pharmacology and botany expert. Oh, wait, that oh, reminds me. Okay. Doesn't one of Chlorand's voice lines mention that Emily has a true profession? An identity hmm. that stayed a mystery up till now? We'll know once we've learned more about her. A casual stroll after a meal aids digestion and increases blood circulation. So, would you like to join? Neutralize! Fresh and floral! So we're gonna have a dendro um numa aligned character that's pretty interesting do we have an element for all of the fontaine reactions you know the usia or numa thing i don't know there's no pyro right starlet kino doesn't do that Yeah, so I guess we're still missing some elements, I think. Oh my gosh. What? Oh my gosh. She's so cool. Right? <laughs> I love her shoes. Yes. They're so and, cool. and did you see when she smelled the perfume? Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that detail. Yeah. Yes. I miss that She's too. so <laughs> elegant, like just the way she moves. Like it's just so right? beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I know, right? So, let me tell you. Emily is the most renowned perfumer in Fontaine. Ooh. The new products that she releases usually sell out immediately. What? Well, <laughs> almost. So, if you want to get your hands on one of her perfumes, then be prepared to start lining up at four in the morning. Oh. Whoa. Mm. Emily mm. has another identity on top of her trade as a perfumer. She's a forensic cleaner. Huh. Mm-hmm. She's the one who cleans up crime scenes after an investigation has been concluded. She's a very experienced cleaner, so she often picks up details and scraps of evidence that other people overlooked. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So mm -hmm. she's kind of like a forensic examiner. You know, Chevrus mm -hmm. mentioned it in one of her voice lines. She said yeah. that Emily's chemistry knowledge is super helpful for uncovering hidden clues during investigations. Mm -hmm. She can tell what type of perfume that someone wears and where they've been spending time. Okay, it, it all makes sense now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's because of her forensics work. That also explains how Emily and Chevrus mm -hmm. got so close. Uh-huh, absolutely. Forensic cleaning is a lot more dangerous than creating perfumes. Hmm. Emily generally doesn't talk about her other identity in order to avoid retaliation from suspects. Hmm. So most people only know her as a famous perfumer. Oh, Emily's probably been through all sorts of stressful situations. Oh, right. From like high-end venues to gruesome crime scenes. Mm. Oof, it must take a lot of mental toughness to handle all that. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And her professional experiences contribute to her unique combat style. Emily is a dendro polearm user. When she unleashes her elemental skill, she creates a Lumaduce case that deals AoE dendro damage. Ooh. Okay, let me read this first. So this must be whatever she said, Lumaduce case. So it can so only one can exist on the field. Yeah, makes sense. Collect sense from nearby burning opponents, upgrading from level 1 to level 2, dealing increased damage. 
Okay, so she does work with Burning. That's, you know, all the rumors and leaks and whatnot I've been trying to keep up on. Because I have been wanting to do more with Burning. And I thought that the new artifact set was going to be what fixed it. But then it didn't. I built the, the artifact set and everything. And I'm like, oh, this isn't that great. Excellent. <laughs> what the heck is going on with Burning then? Then I started reading rumors about uh, Emily. So her in combination with that artifact set, I think, is going to fix Burning. But they're not going to touch on that here, to be honest. You know, we might get some more details about her kit, but it's really going to be up to the players and creators and stuff to figure out if she's actually um, going to be fixing an elemental reaction, kind of like Chevro's fixed overloaded. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, so casting an elemental burst creates a level 3 Lumidos case. Okay. On the field... Oh, and stows existing case on the field away. Oh, okay, so it'll override what the one that she has out. So wait, her burst and the skill kind of do the same thing? They both summon a Lumidow's case, okay. So when the duration of level 3 Lumidow's case ends, level 1 Lumidow's case will be recreated. Ooh, I bet that's... Uh, well, I'll just do the rest of this without my mic. Got, don't have the room anymore. Skill releases a really nice fragrance. Mm. <laughs> I know, the Lumidus case is a creation that Emily is really proud of. Oh. It fires puffs of pure dew at nearby opponents periodically which deals dendro damage. Oh. oh. When nearby opponents are affected by the burning reaction, the Lumiduce case will accumulate scents at intervals. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? After collecting two scents, the Lumiduce case will be upgraded from level one to level two. Oh. At level two, the Lumiduce case can fire an extra puff of pure dew. Oh. The damage dealt by the puffs of pure dew will also be increased. Only one Lumidus case created by Emily can exist at a time. Oh, wait, does that mean it's pointless to collect scents once you've already reached level 2, though? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. After Emily's passive talent, Lingering Fragrance has been unlocked. Hmm. The level 2 Lumidus case will release Clear Dew Cologne that scales with every two scents collected. Oh. The cologne will deal AoE Dendro damage to nearby opponents. Okay. So if I'm understanding this correctly, only enemies under the burning status will create scents, and the damage scales with the number of scents collected by the Lumidus yeah. case? Exactly. That sums it up perfectly. Oh. After unlocking one of her specific talents, Emily will deal greater damage to enemies under the burning condition, oh. and when a Lumidus okay. case is on the field, it increases the entire party's resistance to burning damage. Oh, okay. Now I understand how Emily's talents can work in a party. So, once you use her Lumidus case to apply Dendro to your enemies, you can use a Pyro skill with a different character to trigger the burning condition. Uh-huh, that's exactly right! <laughs> okay. And the Lumidus case has even more functionalities! Oh. After you've unleashed Emily's Elemental Burst, the Lumidus case will rise to level... All right, so I kind of missed everything. At intervals. Oh, <laughs> I know, okay. right? After collecting two cents, exactly, and her oh. it fires puffs of pure dew at nearby opponents periodically, which deals dendro. 
ice fragrance. Mm. Okay, so what now? <laughs> I know. The Lumi Deuce case is a creation that Emily is really proud of. Oh. It fires puffs of pure dew at nearby opponents periodically, okay. which deals dendro damage. Oh. oh. When nearby opponents are affected by the burning reaction, the Lumi Deuce case will accumulate scents at intervals. Oh. <laughs> I know, okay. right? After collecting two cents, the Lumiduce case will be upgraded from level one to level two. Oh. At level two, the Lumiduce case can fire an extra puff of pure dew. Oh. The damage dealt by the puffs of pure dew will also be increased. Only one Lumiduce case created by Emily can exist at a time. Oh, wait, does that mean it's pointless to collect cents once you've already reached level two, though? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. After Emily's passive talent, Lingering Fragrance has been unlocked. Hmm. The level 2 Lumiduce case will release Clear Dew Cologne that scales with every two cents collected. Oh. The cologne will deal AoE Dendro damage to nearby opponents. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, only enemies under the burning status will create scents, and the damage scales with the number of scents collected by the Lumiduce yeah. case? Exactly. That sums it up perfectly. Oh. After unlocking one of her specific talents, Emily will deal greater damage to enemies under the burning condition. Oh, and when a Lumiduce okay. case is on the field, it increases the entire party's resistance to burning damage. Oh, okay. Mm. Emily's damage is increased. So she doesn't increase the party's damage for burning, so... Uh-oh. So I'm kind of worried that she's not going to be doing what... I want her to do, which is just fix burning, make burning teams actually good. But it's so weak now that it it needs a ton of work. So I don't know. That's I don't, I really hope that she doesn't suck. Okay, now I understand how Emily's talents can work in a party. So once you use her Lumiduce case to apply Dendro to your enemies, you can use because. So the problem with her doing more burning damage is it's like um, blooms. So like use Kabe, for example. Well, no, no maybe not Kabe. Maybe uh, I'll just do a standard. No, a Nilu team, I guess, wouldn't make sense. So if Nilu is built for HP to increase the bloom damage from her Bountiful Cores, she won't have a lot of EM. And if she's the one that applies Hydro to a Dendro to make the core, that core is going to be weak. But if you have her apply Hydro and then hit it with Dendro with someone with a lot of EM, then that Dendro core will do more damage because it scales off of the EM of the character who created it. So... Someone like Arlet Kino might actually mess it up because she applies a lot of... Well, maybe... I don't I actually don't know how often her hits actually apply the status of Pyro. But... It... It also scales with EM, burning damage does, so... This is... I don't know. I'm a bit skeptical now about if this is actually going to be any better than anything else. I guess resistance to burning damage might help because that is pretty annoying because um, I've tried some burning teams like way before and if your character just happens to get that burning damage, like if Nahida for example, oh god, she just instantly dies. She just burns to death like instantly. You're on the field for a couple seconds and she's her HP bar drains so fast you don't even have time to realize what's happening. So <laughs> I suppose that'll help I'm just trying to keep my fingers crossed that it's she's actually going to do a whole lot of good for burning, but I'm kind of skeptical now. Use a pyro skill with a different character to trigger the burning condition. Uh-huh. That's exactly right. Damage. Oh, okay. Now I understand how Emily's talents can work in a party. So, once you use her Lumiduce case to apply Dendro to your enemies, you can use a pyro skill with a different character to trigger the burning condition. Uh-huh. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. And the Lumiduce case has even more functionalities. Oh. 
after you've unleashed Emily's Elemental Burst, the Lumiduce case will rise to level 3 and collect the existing Lumiduce case on the field. Oh, that's cool. This fully upgraded Lumiduce case will cause Scented Dew to continuously descend onto nearby enemies, dealing dendro damage. Yeah. Oh. When the level 3 Lumiduce case leaves the field, a new Lumiduce case will be created. Mm. This case will be at the same level as the one she collected during her burst. Okay, so if a level two Lumiduce case is about to lead the field, then you could unleash Emily's elemental burst to reset its duration. Uh, that way the level two Lumiduce case will be able to spend even more time on the field. <laughs> Bingo! It seems like you've really figured out her kit but we should let travelers experiment with these mechanics for themselves. Okay. So, using her burst is going to be the key, because it sounds like using her burst is what's going to make sure that, at least most of the part, it's going to mostly make sure that she's the one causing burning. Because it is possible to do it the other way around, just like with blooms, where you can either hit a wet opponent with dendro to create a bloom, or you can hit uh, an enemy with a Dendro Aura with Hydro to create a bloom. So the same thing goes with burning. You can create burning if they already have uh, either Pyro on it and then hit it with Dendro. Or if they have Dendro already on the enemy, then you hit it with Pyro. So who does it is what is going to affect the damage. So... Using her burst sounds like it's going to make sure that she should be the one causing the burning damage because it sounds like it's going to just keep applying Dendro. Hey, I think I understand Emily a lot better now that we've learned about her skills. Mm. She transforms scents into perfumes and leaves the world a cleaner place. Yes. Honestly, her skills seem to perfectly combine her talents as both a perfumer and forensic cleaner. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly! Okay, great. Emily <laughs> is an expert with all kinds of scents. No suspect can hope to remain in the shadows while Emily is on the case. She always manages to discover the truth. Ooh, are we going to get the chance oh, to see her yes. forensic cleaner side? Oh, please say yes. <gasps> please. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. During <laughs> Emily's story quest, the Pamam de Ambra chapter, travelers will learn about the mysterious Agus flower that has appeared in Sumeru. Travelers will work with Emily to uncover a series of mysteries related to this flower and expose the truth once and for all. Ooh, oh, so exciting! Yes, I love mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You'll have to leave travelers to uncover the details for themselves. Oh. In the meantime, I have some other information to share. <gasps> oh, what is it? The upcoming event wishes, of course. <gasps> yes. Oh, nice already. Yes, let's go. In the first phase of version 4.8, okay. travelers can look forward to returning yes. event wishes from Navia and Nilu. Be sure to check time. them out if you're interested. <laughs> and in the second phase of version 4.8, we'll have event wishes for Emily and Yelon. A new five-star polearm, Lumidus Elegy, will also Ooh. be featured on the weapon banner. All right, right. okay. That was a <laughs> lot of information just now, so let's take a break for my... Lumidus Elegy will... So... Event wishes for Emily... This is really good. I'm, I'm happy with all this. Especially since I already have all the the characters showing up, so... Good. <laughs> I hope I can save enough for her, because I'm on a 50-50. And I, I know that I'm not going to be able to save up to 180 wishes. That's a lot. That takes a lot longer than a couple of months to gather, so... Alright. I'm pretty and excited for this update. Uh, that sounds I don't know about her weapon, to be honest. I really tried for, uh, was it Cloran's and Alhatham's weapon banner was like a really good banner, I feel like, but Yalon and Emily, I don't know, it seems like the weapon banner is not going to be very good. And I already have Navia's weapon. Wait, who was in the first part? Oh yeah, Nilu. I don't know if I need Nulu's weapon because there's that four star HP weapon that I have. Did I type that in right? Oop, guess so. Looks 
like he's yelling at him. Ooh, it looks like we're headed to a new place. And if we're headed to a beautiful location, then it's only fitting to wear a beautiful outfit. Yes, exactly. You are so right. And Nilu and Kirara will get new outfits in version 4.8. Yay! Yay! Oh, I'm, so I'm so ready. So ready. Oh, okay. Let's start off with Nilu. I took a good look earlier, and I have to say, it's totally awesome. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I have to share it with y'all in more detail. Okay, look, uh, take a look, take a look, take a look. So pretty. Come with me on a fairy tale journey. I just love Nilu so much. I present to you, a gift from the forest. <laughs> Still eating her touching. Oh my gosh, she oh looks so gosh. beautiful. She's so She's gorgeous. So like, look at all the flowers gorgeous. and like the, the skirt being petals. Oh my yes. gosh. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh. So pretty. Uh, it, it really, really suits Nilu too, don't you think? Yes, it's yeah, it oh, really it does. Shows off her beauty even more, and I'm so happy. Oh, <laughs> there's there's also a really cool story behind this outfit. Does everyone remember the title of the new version? Yeah, Summer Tide Scales and Tails. Like fairy tales, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Cool. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. This summer, travelers will get to visit a fairy tale world known as Simulanka. In this world, mm. Nilu will get a new outfit and a new identity. That Ooh, is so exciting. So awesome. <laughs> yes. It's going to be so good. So, I'm guessing Simulanka is the new summer region? Yep. Mm -hmm. And this fairy tale world is facing all sorts of crises. Travelers will discover a giant footprint shortly after entering this world. <gasps> Not a footprint. Oh. Oh, oh my no. gosh. Whoa, whoa. That footprint is huge. <laughs> Wait a second. Right? You'd have to be massive to leave a footprint like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and if you follow the footprints into the depths of the region, then you might be able to find some clues. Origami animals live in this forest, so you might be able to get That's some so valuable cool. information from them. Ooh. Ooh. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. huh. I notice some of the animals look off color. Yes, they do. Very perceptive of you. Some of the origami animals are in big trouble. The color <gasps> no. of their paper is fading. Oh, I know, no. and it's so oh. sad. <laughs> so travelers will need to work together with their friends to revitalize the forest and help those animals solve this crisis. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I will do anything to help these origami creatures. I love Absolutely. them already. <laughs> I know, 100%. I want to take anything. one home with me. Yes, but... Okay. <laughs> Travelers won't have to face these crises alone. They'll receive help from okay. all sorts of companions during their journey in Simulanka. Hey, it's Kirara in her new outfit. Oh. And Navia! I love her outfit. Oh, ah. and there's Hat Guy. <laughs> <laughs> If travelers are interested in seeing how the events in Simulaka unfold, then be sure to check out the summer region during the new update. Okay, well, since Kirara is wearing her cool new outfit, can we take a closer mm -hmm. look? Thank you, Mew, for noticing. I was wondering, I'm like, so you're gonna show her? <laughs> That's just what I've been waiting for. Yes. Scaling walls, leaping across the rooftops. <laughs> Nothing new for me. Gosh, I love her hat. Won't I get funny looks from people if I dress like this on a delivery? Whoa! Ooh. Oh my gosh! She's so cute! Goodness. So cute! I know! Oh, she's so cool. It looks like she's ready for an adventure. Hat, 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 hat. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yes! She oh, has it's a hat. adorable! Yes! The best yeah, the color, style, and the <laughs> accessories all complement Kirara perfectly. She's really giving me like a strong impression of a vigilante who comes out at night. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, you better definitely. watch out. <laughs> well, best of all, <laughs> travelers will be able to obtain this outfit for free. Wow! Excerpts of bliss will be scattered throughout Simulanka. Travelers will need to collect jubilant feathers and open fairy tale troves to obtain excerpts of bliss. Oh. After you've collected enough of these excerpts, travelers can obtain Kirara's new outfit for free. Plus, Ooh. they can also get primo gems and other rewards. 
Yes! Oh, awesome! I know what I'm doing the minute 4.8 goes live. Collecting excerpts of Bliss so I can get my hands on that outfit. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Get my yes. paws on that. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, definitely <laughs> count me in. I love it. There's so much to do in the new version. You think so? Well, there's even more content in the big summer update. No. Yes, there's more. Oh, free cool. Sri Lanka has a bunch of fabulous Sweet. events that... So what? You gotta check only have C1 QRS, so that'll be nice. Oh, her C2 would be really nice. It she will grant other party members she crashes into in her uh, skill. I think it is is so when she's running around in cat form. Uh, creates a uh, shield. It's only 40% of the maximum absorption of her normal shield, though, but still, she's a shielder, so more shields, that's pretty awesome. Heck yeah. Everyone can enjoy. Oh, really? Let's hear it. Oh, you got it. Travelers mm -hmm. can look forward to four different kinds of gameplay in Simulanka, and they all follow a unique theme. Ooh. The first is called Boreal Flurry. Hmm. Travelers will have to move through streaming currents and destroy targets to score points and earn rewards. Destroying special targets will even produce unique effects. I really, really, really love to say more, but we'll let travelers experiment with them in the game. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so cool. It's like we get to shoot at things midair. That's awesome. Yeah, right? So cool. Oh, okay, next up, we have Flying Hatter's Trick. Travelers can use a flying hat to attract hmm. toy figures, allowing them to score points in a variety of different game modes. Oh, hey, it looks like a claw machine, just like the ones in the arcades. Yes. Oh. Exactly. I am still terrible at those, though. Oh, you're going to be good at this, though. I can I do hope. It's a lot easier than a claw <laughs> so thank machine. Thank you for your belief in me. <laughs> <laughs> Always. The third gameplay is called Metropole Trials. Travelers will need to form two teams to complete a combat trial. Defeating opponents will accumulate valor. Filling your Valor energy bar will trigger a Time for Valor, which grants buffs to your team. Oh, nice. Mm. Defeating opponents while a Time for Valor is active will earn you even more points. Oh, and travelers who take part in these three events will earn Star Sail coins. In figurine fabrication, travelers can insert these coins into fantastical fabricators to earn keepsake figurines. Mm. Hopefully that makes it even easier for travelers to remember their journey. Aww, what nice. a cute origami oh, hamster. So cute. <laughs> Just a little guy. So can they go in the teapot? I wonder. <clears throat> um, after travelers have used the fantastical fabricators enough times, they'll be able to invite Kirara to their team and claim special rewards, including Prima Gems and Serena teapot furnishings. Oh, and travelers can display their figurines on good frames, both Ooh. inside their Serena teapot and around Simulanka. But don't worry cool. if you don't receive the figurine that you want. You can also gift and trade figurines with your friends. Oh, yes! Oh, that's a relief. Ooh, that's awesome. Awesome. Yes. That's so cool. Ah, it sounds like the summer region gives us a lot to look forward to. Mm -hmm. I wonder what else version 4.8 has in store. Oh, oh, okay. You've got perfect timing. <laughs> All right, just, let's take a look mm -hmm. at the rest of the events in version 4. I just realized Kirara's, uh, the name for her outfit, Phantom in Boots. Instead of puss in boots. <laughs> She's a cat. That's funny. Point eight. All right. Yes. Oh, first up, we're introducing the Imaginarium Theater. A once blank canvas has been sitting in a corner of the theater lobby. But now, vibrant colors have emerged on its surface. <gasps> this new permanent gameplay mode will launch in version 4.8. Nice. Wait, what? what? By new per but now, theater. A once blank canvas has been sitting in a corner of the theater lot. Oh, yeah. But now, I was wondering about that. vibrant colors have emerged on its surface. <gasps> this new permanent gameplay mode will launch in version 4.8. Nice. Mm. Five envisaged echoes challenges will become available in version 4.8. Each challenge will correspond to a designated character. Hmm. Travelers will receive two keys of echoes upon entering the challenge, and each challenge requires two keys to unlock. If you complete the challenge, then you'll be able to obtain the corresponding character's Echo Cosmetic Reward. Oh. Yay! 
Ooh, <laughs> okay, so this is what I've heard of. So, okay, I noticed that too. So, look at that. Gene has to be level 90. I mean, that's not a problem for me, but that's going to be a big problem for a lot of people. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about level 90, and I've... <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've had some comments on YouTube for leveling characters for 90. It just, it really pisses some people off for some reason. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, and then she also has to be level 8 in order to get it. Which isn't too bad of a problem because most of my characters have pretty high friendship level. Although, keys to unlock. I don't know about these ones If yet. you complete the challenge, then Urara's you'll be able to max. obtain the corresponding character's Echo Cosmetic Reward. Can I see what yes. it looks like? And once you've equipped an ah, echo onto its okay. designated character, they'll have a unique trailing effect while they're sprinting. Oh my gosh. Do you look echo looks like flaming? So yeah, I almost included this leak in my last video on Imaginarium Theater because um I had started talking about how I think that this was supposed to be something, but it was something it, it, yeah, I ended up looking it up, and it was actually something completely different. I just had mixed up the facts, basically. I was reading so much uh, leaks and stuff about Imaginarium Theater that this was one of the other leaks that I had thought um, was going to be included in 4.7, but didn't. So yeah, that makes more sense. Feathers! That's so cool! <sighs> yes, and Chi-Chi's echo Whoa. seems to give her ghost companions. I don't companions. know if I like Chi-Chi's. Honestly, I creepy. feel like that's something that Hu Tao would be super interested in. Because she has some, like, snowflakes or something falling away from her, kind of like all the rest of them, where there's stuff falling away, but there's, like, these little spirits running into her. <laughs> oh, Creepy. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, hold on. I have a question. Okay, I love If we ours. only start off with two keys, then that means we can only unlock one challenge, right? Mm. Are there any other ways to obtain those keys? Oh, yeah, of course. Travelers can receive one key from each season of the Imaginarium Theater where they complete and finalize mm. a combat performance in Act 6 or higher. Oh, That's okay, cool. so you can't unlock those Echo Rewards in one go. Ah, oh, Travelers. What yes, about if I already exactly. did season Exactly. I know. So take your time, everyone. There's no need to rush. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you can only complete the challenge using its designated character. You're also going to have to pay attention to the character level and friendship level requirements. The participating character must be level 90, and their friendship level must be 8 or higher. Okay, I was it's wondering if they're going to just well, try and slide past your characters. That, that Sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Envisaged Echoes Challenge doesn't just test how well you can use a character, but also how well you understand their skills. Each challenge has specific obstacles, and you'll only be able to pass if you fully master the character's skill mechanics. Huh. That's awesome! Oh man, I'm so excited! Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. So ready. <laughs> you can also look forward to a ton of events happening in Fontaine. Yeah. <laughs> travelers will get to meet an enthusiastic scholar in Romaritime Harbor, which allows travelers to play Bing Bang Finchball. Thanks, Bossima. <laughs> Bossima and Finchball seems to remind me of something. Oh, wait, wasn't there also a Bossima in version 3.8? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's right. The Bossima we met last year was a Hydra Idolin replica of a human who once visited the Valeria Mirage five centuries ago. Oh, she invented yeah. the earliest version of Finchball. The Bossima in Fontaine is her descendant. Mm. Mm. Wow. Interesting. That is such a neat connection. Yeah. And since so much time has passed, I'm guessing that we'll get to experience a new kind of Finchball. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> Travelers will still need to launch Finchballs into target zones in order to score points. But... These new stages will have rival finch balls. Rival oh, finch balls okay, will make yeah, it harder to score now. points, so travelers will need to strategize based on the situation in front of them. Ooh, oh. I like the new changes. Mm. I'm excited to try the new finch ball. Agreed. And that's not the only new addition. This version also has a co op mode. What? So Let's you go. can be each other's rival finch Amazing. balls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> travelers uh, can freely choose their level while they're in co op mode. Each level has different terrain characteristics and types of finch balls. Players will take turns launching finch balls, and the person with the most points after four rounds will win the match. 
That sounds really fun, no matter who wins or loses. Totally. I mean, look at these little guys. Look at the little finches. They're so cute. <laughs> Aww, They're so, so cute. adorable. Right? Oh, and speaking of cuteness, does everyone still remember Asagiri's photo taking commission? Uh, uh, uh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, Asagiri no. <laughs> has made her way to Fontaine, but this time, her photo requirements aren't as strict. Travelers can easily satisfy the commission requirements by submitting photos of their favorite characters. An interval timer mode has also been added, hmm. making it easier for travelers to capture their characters in the perfect moment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm cool. so excited to see what all the master photographers are going to come up with. Oh, yeah. We'll also have the opportunity to meet up with Hosseini in Fontaine. You know, I don't understand why when they add these events with the cameras and add all these cool things with the cameras, why they don't leave them in the game. Because if they want people to be taking pictures, why do they just keep adding these features and they're like, nope, you can only do that for two weeks. It just doesn't make any sense to me. They should be adding these features like into the cameras after the events or something. Whatever. On taint. And he's brought an upgraded energy amplifier with him. Wait, wasn't Hosseini studying energy amplifiers in order to graduate? Oh. Does does uh, this mean that he still hasn't graduated? Oh no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I um <clears throat> scientific research is filled with obstacles. <laughs> this time, Hosseini has integrated the energy amplifier with Fontanian technology to create the Hosseini amplifier. And he'll need our help to test it out in combat. Listen, if we can help him finally graduate, I am definitely in. <laughs> He's never yes, going to please. <laughs> no, totally. So, in each stage, travelers will need to form three parties to participate in three consecutive rounds of combat tests. Mm, okay. Each party member will provide a fixed amount of motive force based on their character level. Mm. Motive force can be used to set up ley line effectors, which grant buffs in combat. Oh, so the same character can be assigned in multiple parties, but repeating characters won't provide motive force in subsequent combat trials. So you better keep that in mind while you're forming your teams. Oh. Okay, I get it. So we need to make sure that each party has enough motive force to receive combat buffs. That way we can obtain a higher score. <laughs> exactly. Once you've configured all the buff slots for a single party, you can also choose a buff to apply across all your parties. All right. Travelers will have to experiment to determine the best setup for them. Awesome. Okay, is anyone Probably else no here excited about card easy. games? Uh, I know I yeah. I know that I'm excited about card games. <laughs> so, in version 4.8, a couple of old friends are being added to Genius Invocation TCG. New monster cards and action cards will also be available. Sweet. Also, yeah. the Overflowing Mastery event is returning in yes. version 4.8, so don't miss out. Let's go. All right, that's all the event-related news that I have right now. So next, let's talk about system optimizations. Wow, Sarah's Ooh. on a roll today. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> no code? <laughs> okay, first off, the encounter point system has been improved. In version 4.8, excess encounter points earned from daily activities can now be stored. Oh. Travelers oh, won't oh, have excellent. to worry about them going to waste anymore. Ooh. Okay, so how do we use the points that we've stored? Well, travelers can convert their long-term encounter points into daily encounter points by spending original resin. Long-term oh. encounter points will it's be dumb. reset during every version update that ends with point zero. In other words, the first update for a new region. That means the first reset will occur in version 5.0. Sweet! Oh, nice! Mm -hmm. You can spend them immediately. So cool. Yeah, or you can save them for a rainy day. That gives travelers a lot more freedom. Ooh, also, I guess it's not for the me. cooldown the for takes all world bosses anyway, but... will be reduced to 10 seconds. Oh, yes! What? Mm -hmm. oh. I know! That should make it a lot easier to farm material. 5.0. Sweet. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. You can spend them immediately. So cool. Yeah, or you can save them for a rainy day. That gives travelers a lot more freedom. Ooh, also, the cooldown for all world bosses will be reduced to 10 seconds. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I know. But do you have to that leave should make and come it a back? lot easier to farm materials. That works perfectly that. with the changes to the encounter oh, point definitely. system. You'll be able to convert oh, encounter points even faster now that cooldown periods are shorter. That's 
Super yeah, cute. <laughs> that's kind of tough. I mean, I'm okay with it, but I, the stupid thing is that you have to leave and then come back to respawn the, the boss. I mean, if if Withering Waves can do it, why can't you do it, Genshin? I mean, come on. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, we've also got new optimizations for travelers who love to follow the game's stories. We will now have a one-click, high UI feature, which will hopefully what? provide a more immersive experience. In addition, we'll be getting a new Wait, feature. What? One click. Awesome. Well, we've also got new optimizations for travelers who love to follow the game's stories. We will now have a one click high UI feature. Like whenever, that's pretty sick. Cause I would, I would which will that. hopefully provide a more immersive experience. In addition, we'll be getting a new feature that allows travelers to review dialogue, text, and audio in their current conversation. So don't worry about missing out on any details. Oh, thank goodness. Ooh, <laughs> that is perfect for travelers who like to take screenshots and travelers who like to analyze the dialogue. Hmm. Oh, you can look forward to a bunch of other optimizations in version 4.8. Mm -hmm. Some domains in Mondstadt and Liyue will be adjusted. Travelers can choose to lower their world level once they've reached oh, yeah, world I've level 3. That. The difficulty of the license to glide quest that. will yeah. also be... keep clicking outside the, the window, so every time I try and skip back, it doesn't work. So... Let's see here. Oh, it's just level 1, though. What happens at level 5? Does it still happen? That's what I want to know. Because those Mondstadt domains are just... stupid. <laughs> They just, they have some OP crazy effects that are just, I don't, none of the other ones have them in the game. So it, yeah, they should definitely remove it for all the difficulties, I think, because that or make the other ones more difficult because, you know, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing basically for difficulties one through four in like a Fontaine domain. The only difference is the enemies you fight, whereas... If they do it the way I'm thinking, they're probably going to do it. One will be like enemies. All these are just enemies. And then maybe four is the one where it's like, I'm going to drain all of your your energy and you can't do this and you can't do that. And we're going to constantly hit you with icicles. Plus, we're just going to hit you with, with hydro and you're just going to be constantly frozen. Can't move forever. That's my, that's my guess. But maybe they've removed it for all of them because they're just so annoying to... To farm those things. A bunch of other optimizations in version 4.8. Mm -hmm. Some domains in Mondstadt and Liyue will be adjusted. Travelers can choose to lower their world level once they've reached world level 3. The difficulty of the license to what? glide quest will also be lowered. Just to name a few. Oh, yes, that will be so helpful. Wait, what? Will also be lowered. Level 3. The difficulty of the license to glide quest will also be lowered. Just to name a few. Oh, Gosh, there must be some really bad players out there. <laughs> you gotta lower your world level a level three. Gers, I don't think I've ever lowered my world level. I mean, if you have to, that's fine. But that's like when you first start the game. Like, it shouldn't be getting that hard. Look at this. Their name is Raveler. <laughs> what? What happened there? Why is there no T? Uh, but why does that need to be lowered? What difficulty was there in that? I don't understand. Oh my god. Yes, that will be so helpful for new players. It'll be easier to pass Amber's gliding test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I know. could you? But what? be sure to how keep an eye out have any for future announcements before? to learn what? more information. Mm. What? Well, uh, we hit everything, oh right? Actually, we still have some more information to share. Gotta make sure three-year-olds play the game, I guess. Let's display the final redemption code. Dun da da da. Time. We wait with bated breath. Here we go. Well, I was gonna play Zone Zone Zero after this, but. Uh, I thought I was gonna be able to. 
have the mic level now, but... <laughs> I'll just, I'll, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I can't uh, keep talking on the mic, basically. So. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> oh, yo, pets. Oh, what's that? I've never been to one. Oh, whoa, what's that? It looks so cozy. I want to be there. I know, right? Okay, <laughs> listen carefully, everyone. I have an important mm -hmm. announcement. Mm hmm. Hoyo Fest is coming soon. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> For those of you who might not know, Hoyo Fest is an annual event that celebrates all of Hoyo versus games. Oh, so not just Genshin Impact. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah! <laughs> Starting in July, Hoyo Fest will host a series of online and offline events. By participating in these events, you'll have the chance to obtain Hoyo Fest themed merch, event exclusive Ooh. gifts, and both in game and out of game rewards. <gasps> Feel free to join in on the fun, travelers. More detailed information will be posted across Genshin Impact's official accounts. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So excited. I usually don't participate because it's just like creator things that you need like 100k followers and all sorts of crazy shit in order to actually do it. But that's usually the case anyway. Otherwise, it's like... I don't know. It's... <laughs> Just dumb little check-in things and, like, there's, like, little coin slot things. <laughs> you just get random stuff and hope that you get some Primo Gems or something. And, it, I don't know, I just never do any of it. It's never worth it. We also have an exciting collaboration to announce. Genshin Impact will be partnering with one of the largest aquariums in the mm -hmm. world, Sea Aquarium. Hopefully, travelers will be able to participate in an entirely new a... collaboration experience. Oh, I, I don't think Genshin Impact has ever teamed up with an aquarium before. Uh, let me think. It, it's got to be a Fontaine-themed collaboration, right? Mm. Yes, you guessed it! Nailed it! This event <laughs> will be based on Fontaine. Sijuin, the head nurse at the Fortress of Meripede, will guide travelers as they encounter marine creatures and explore the mysteries of the deep sea. Keep an eye on Genshin Impact's and Sea Aquarium's official accounts for more information. Oh, hmm. I'm I'm guessing so it's ready. a web event. Mm -hmm. Fish time. Awesome. Now for some out of game genius invocation TCG news. Ooh. <laughs> the knockout stages of Astra Carnival, the Prince Cup for the Atlantic, and Pacific regions will be held soon. The Atlantic stage will take place what? on July 27th, and the Pacific stage will be held on August 2nd. They have so IRL, look forward to TCG? a fierce showdown between top players from those two regions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's also a little surprise in store for you all. Uh -huh. Before the knockout stages begin, all travelers will receive a commemorative card back <gasps> in their in-game mailbox. Yeah. Oh, okay, Let's go. maybe. Wait, can you play? I haven't really played TCG that much. I haven't gotten into it. I don't know. Not a huge fan. I do like card games and stuff, but once you put it onto the computer, I, I feel like it's hard to get the same experience. Because there's just... I don't know. Especially when you're playing, I guess, against a bot. There should be so much more skipping, and I just feel like it should happen a lot faster than... Because you're not actually sitting there with another person or something. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're talking about. It's like maybe you could play TCG competitively, I guess. I don't know. Is that a thing? So be sure to follow the official Astro Carnival album, yeah, The care. Shimmering Voyage Vol right, mu cool. Music Slap! All right. That's all the information that we have to share. Then that means... Yeah, it's almost that time again. It's time for the special program to end? Yeah. <laughs> Aww. I know. Well, is there anything y'all want to say before we go? Yes. Uh, I'm very excited for the costumes for Nilo and Kirara. They are so adorable, and I can't wait to see like their yeah. new uh, roles that they get to play in this new event. I'm, I'm so excited for this. I can't wait. I, too, as an unbiased individual, am excited about that. Um, <laughs> but, oh, I'm so, so excited, too, for the echoes. Like, oh, I'm so down for all of this customization. And the music! Oh, it's so... Listen, I'm just very excited. Well, I just wanted to say, I'm so excited that you all get to finally meet Emily. Yay! I really hope you like her. 
I know, totally. And I am super duper excited for Hoyo Fest and also for the Sea Aquarium collaboration. Yes. That is so exciting and cool. I can't wait to see what happens with that. So right. epic. Yes. All right. Well, this is the end of the special program. Thank you all so much for being here. And yeah, I guess we'll see y'all in game. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's the new Kirara. Riding her Pokemon. So I assume those are going to be the first few characters that we get. Oh, sweet. I'm pretty excited for 5.0. That's going to be awesome. Well, anyway, I guess I'll just call it there. Uh, if anyone watched, thanks so much. Make sure you subscribe to my main channel, and I'll catch you there.